From the Selfish Path to Romance, download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com. Now, here's a question I received from uh, Marissa. Dear Dr. Kenner, I have a question and I can't seem to come to a rational answer. I was married to a man for 11 years, that's over a decade, who was addicted to drugs. So picture that. She's married to a man who was addicted to drugs over 11 years. Now picture this. I am a Christian and divorce was pretty much preached against. Think about that for a moment. This man was abusive, manipulative, and controlling. Finally, I managed to walk away from this catastrophe. However, my heart keeps telling me that he is still my husband. I want to bring closure to this, but somehow I keep sort of looking back thinking maybe I gave up too soon. Truth is, he never was a good husband. But I keep thinking maybe someday I need closure and I don't know how to go on with my life. I need to take my life back. Uh, My guess is you just answered your own question, Marissa. That idea of I need to take my life back. You know you need your own happiness. You know you need to not live in the presence, not in the chronic presence of an abusive person. I don't care whether it's a parent or, in this case, your spouse. I think a morality that tells you you have to stay stuck with a person who is abusive to you, manipulative, controlling, and when you've been addicted to drugs and you've lived with that person for 11 years and they haven't made any changes and you didn't think he was good husband material to begin with, sounds like you made a mistake and you need to change but a morality that tells you you have to stay there is a morality you need to question i don't care what name it goes under christianity or anything else if it's a morality that is against your happiness it is not a moral code no matter what they call themselves um the fact that you managed to walk away the fact that you evaluate it as a catastrophe yay for you the fact that your heart keeps telling you that he's your husband where's that coming from Well, there are a few things. Number one, it could be from the Christian moral code that he's your husband till death do you part. Or just the secular version, till death do you part. You know, you're married till death do you part. Well, that's everyone's hope when they get married. But people grow in different directions. People's characters change. Some people make themselves better and some people make themselves worse. And you always need to be able to evaluate the person. Is this person good or not for my life? And if they're not good for your life and it's not something that you can remedy in a counselor's office or on your own with some um, talking to one another and being honest, then you it's proper to move on. It is proper. It is moral. It is good for your own psychological health. Now, the idea of your heart versus your head or your thoughts versus your feeling, that's a false alternative. All of your feelings and all of your thoughts come from the same database. You're 11 years with this abusive man. And you might have had some good moments. So when you focus on those, an abusive person is is not abusive 24-7. When you've had your good moments, you might have said, oh my God, there's hope. Maybe he's changing. He didn't do drugs for a week. Maybe he's changing and you build up all this hope only to have it dashed again. And you go year after year and you say, maybe I gave up too soon. Maybe you, you didn't, well, how, how, what would be not too soon, another 11 years? I would love you to be good to yourself and realize that all of your thoughts and all of your feelings come from the same database and you will have different feelings when you focus on your heart. We'll have different feelings when you focus on how abusive, manipulative, and controlling he is. My guess is the feelings will not be love and empathy and, and pity. The feelings will be anger and hurt and de- feeling deceived. So I hope that you um, really value yourself. There is a book on my website, Loving Love. Life, Loving Life, good title, by Craig Biddle, that gives you an alternative rational moral code. It's a, it's a book that's very different from what you might have heard um, elsewhere as morality in whatever guise it came as, secular or religious. Uh, Loving Life is a wonderful book by Craig Biddle. On, and of course, I always recommend Ayn Rand's books, um, Uh, The Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged. You can check those out on my website, drkenner.com. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner, and I'm a clinical psychologist. My show is The Rational Basis of Happiness, and you can pick up the phones and call me. My number is toll-free, 1-877-DR-KENNER. That's toll-free, 1-877-DR-K-E-N-N-E-R. And my website is drkenner.com. 
Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance by Drs. Kenner and Locke. Romantic sex is not at all like hedonism. Promiscuous or indiscriminate sex do not in the end bring much pleasure, and what little you do get is often followed by painful regrets, guilt, boredom, and possibly sexually transmitted diseases, some of which are incurable. Use your mind to discover which pleasures are good for you and which are against your self-interest like illicit drugs. Sexual pleasure with someone you value contributes enormously to the joy in your relationship and thus to your happiness with life. If you have contradictory or confused views of sex, it's important to gain a healthy perspective and uproot the damaging ideas learned in childhood from your religious upbringing or from bad experiences of flawed relationships. You don't have to accept your parents' views about love, sex, or any other issue if you judge them to be wrong. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com and at amazon.com.